I was a bit nervous, obviously, this year because uh, you know when the World Cup comes around, a lot of lads put their hand up from the Super League and NRL, so um, you're always in danger of maybe not not making the cut. Um, but uh, I was fortunate enough to make the cut, and I'm, I'm really excited. Obviously, we had the, the qualifiers last year, and I really enjoyed that. The lads were really, really well with me, and um, and I was just really glad to be back there. Now you've played for Italy quite a few times going into this already. How has it felt on those occasions? A mixed one because, like I said, the qualifiers last year was, you know, we could say it was probably the full strength of Italy side. Um, you know, we had Terry Campisi, Mirko Berger, Masco from Rugby Union, um, and a whole host of lads from Q Cup and New South Wales Cup. Uh, so that was a really st- a strong group, and we toured for two weeks, went to Serbia, went to Italy, and come back to England. So that was. It felt like a really professional outfit. In terms of the past, it's been kind of... Uh, it's been really enjoyable, but there might have only been me or two other lads from France, top league, and going playing over there, maybe a couple other lads from England, and going playing over in like Moscow or, or Kiev or in Germany, which with all the Italian lads. And they're not, you know, no disrespect to me, they're not hugely into the rugby, rugby league in terms of ability and stuff like because a lot of them are rugby union players. Um, but they love it um, and they're getting better every year uh, but w- when we go away there it's really fun you know you, you kind of go over there for a weekend play on the, you know, train once play on a Saturday and you obviously go out and, and have a good night with the lads like I said I've got to visit some, some great places that I wouldn't have ever visited in my life might not have got the opportunity to go without Italy so um, like I said Moscow was a, was a great city to just you know just be a part of that Kiev was really good too uh, and obviously been to Germany and and uh, Italy a few times, well, a number of times. And Serbia last year was, was good to go to too. So it's a great experience provided for you. You talked there about playing with some of the Italian lads themselves. You're a heritage player, of course. Mm-hmm. Just tell us a bit about that and what it means for you playing for Italy because of that. Um, it's an interesting one. Obviously, I don't look Italian. <laughs> you know, a lot of my mates and everyone you tell them I'm Italian, they say, oh, no, you're not, because um, my mum is from Cumbria, um, yeah, obviously I was born in England, but my dad is Italian. He he moved over uh, in his late twenties uh, to London. He couldn't speak a word of English. Um, he's still got a bit of a mean accent on him. Uh, but all my family are in Italy on his side. Uh, I only went there about four weeks ago to see my nonna and my my cousin and my aunties um, for the first time in a while. So I am, you know, enormously proud to to be Italian. You know, I always I am I'm half Italian and. I always loved pulling a jersey. Even since I was young, I've always wanted to play for Italy football team and stuff like that. So I just love being a bit different. I love being Italian. Um, so yeah, I am a heritage player, and you know I can't lie. I'm, I don't look Italian. I'm not, you know, I don't have an Italian accent, but uh, I'm, ju- you know, I'm just as proud as as the boys who are pulling on the jersey, hundred percent. So as heritage players who feel Italian, who feel you can wear that jersey with pride. Do you think it's important to you to bring on those Italian players to inspire them? You know, it, it's led to a stage now where Bergamasco's come in and decided he's going to play alongside you, lads. Hundred um, percent. You know, Mirko coming in has been huge uh, f- for the for the sport really in Italy. He's got a massive follow. He's got a hundred thousand followers on Twitter, um, on Instagram. You know, he's always putting po- uh, pictures on. You know, retweeting things and really trying to. You know, just make the presence a little bit, a little bit bigger on social media and things like that. But yeah, the Italian lads, you know, they're just really, really good lads, really down to earth, and they want to learn. You know, obviously, I'm not, I'm not a superstar, but anything I can help them with, I, I always try to do. Um, but like, it's really good with some of the Italian lads when they get to train with, you know, a Terry Campisi or you know, even Bergamasco. You know, they all look up to him from what he does in rugby union. So even, even though they're both quite novice. To rugby league, um, it's just great to have, just great to have them involved. Yeah, I love it. Now you've come from a season with all them rough years, where you have faced relegation. It was obviously you had a fair few injuries yourself this season, but now you're finding yourself at the end of that completely different spectrum. You're flying off to Australia to play in the biggest competition in the sport. What's that like? Um, it's a bit of a weird one, really. Uh, last year, when I obviously went to the qualifiers, I didn't. I had a bit of an injury in my shoulder. I missed about twelve weeks in the middle of the season. I just I probably wasn't playing that well last year. Uh, in myself, I didn't think I had that good of a year. 
and I kind of got into the qualifiers from past uh, performances and end up playing every game and, and scoring you know a few tries and that's probably helped me out this year uh, in terms of this selection but this year I, I felt I was playing well I was really enjoying my rugby and I, and I got a bad injury um, so again I was a little bit nervous uh, thinking you know if I was going to get selected but in terms of that it's hard because because I was enjoying my rugby then obviously the club wasn't doing well and then you get selected it's, it's kind of the feel good kind of keeps rolling on for you um, but it is hard because obviously I didn't want the club to get relegated and, you know the, the club did struggle with injuries we weren't a big club in terms of budget and, and in terms of squad size for the championship I think it was myself and maybe about six or seven lads who, who play every week got injured um, some serious injuries a lot of operations and you know Scott Turner the other outside back winger full back he had to stop playing this year because of too many concussions etc and he's a big player so we were just really unlucky with that but end of the day it's you know the table doesn't lie I suppose and um, the you know, we've been relegated, unfortunately, so you can't turn back time. Back to Italy then. Um, just looking back through all the games you've already played for them, all the moments you've had with that group of lads you've talked about, what's been the one highlight in that time? It's a tough one, really. Obviously, the first game meant a lot to me going playing against Germany. Um, that was my first cap. But I'd probably have to say last year's qualifiers, um, you know, it was good to, to play them games and even though we, we did kind of uh, run Russia with a big score at the end to qualify. And that was probably one of the, the key parts for me because to, to know we'd qualify for the World Cup and it was good to be a part of that, like I said, with that group of lads. Going forward into the World Cup then, a lot of challenges in that tournament. What do you think this squad can achieve? Um, I'm really optimistic. You know, when you look at the, the squad we've, we've got and we're taking, there's some big players there um, you know you can't go further than James Tedesco he's got voted I think I think the players vote of the best player in the NRL this year um, and I think he's going to be massive for us uh, we've got Mark Minicello captain in the side this year and obviously like I said Terry Campese he's playing there um, Paul Vaughan who was almost got in the Australia side again this year too and there's I think there's Daniel Alvaro and, and Brown I think it's Nathan Brown who's um coming over who play for Parramatta so there's there's a whole host of NRL players and some of the lads who play in the New South Wales Cup you know Josh Mantelato was in the squad who's at Hull KR um, so there's some some real good players and I think if we get off to a good start against Ireland I think you know I th I'd, I'd be pretty um, be pretty disappointed if we didn't get out of the group I think that's probably what our aim is going to be to get out of the group and see as far as we can go um, but you know, there's no easy games, is there? You know, if you look at Ireland's squad, I think there's only maybe two championship players, one lad from Ireland, the rest are Super League regulars, so they're gonna have a strong side. Um, Fiji, the same again, a lot of NRL players, um, and America have gone pretty fifty-fifty, haven't they? They've gone with a lot of local lads from the American comp, and then a few a few Aussies. So that'll be an interesting game down in Townsville. So I'm looking forward to that. What's the bit you're looking forward to most then? Uh, just getting over there and and just being a part of it really it's, it's probably going to be the highlight of my career uh, personally and just hopefully if I get called upon to, to have a dig you know and enjoy myself and, and play well um, I don't feel I've ever let the, the country down when I've played so hopefully if, if I am called upon then uh, I perform well but yeah training there and like I said being a part of that with the lads the Tedesco's, you know, Anthony Mercello's the assistant coach, Cameron Serraldo's the head coach, you know, Paul Vaughan, you know, Berkham Asco, being around these these top quality professionals and just seeing if I could learn something really.